um, I'm fine too, thanks. And perhaps a good news for you. Um, here, according to what, what I have received for the Chinese students, normally, yeah, the graduate, the graduated students, they will return back the last week of this month, that means April, at the end of April. And for other, other students, normally they could return at the beginning of May, after the vacation. She, mm, yeah, they say these are for for Chinese students, but for international students, perhaps it will be later. Now you see. Um, Lao Xu said it went for Chinese students. Yeah, according to what I have received, yeah. Uh huh. Mm, for international students, perhaps it will be later because. Uh, for the moment, China, we have, yeah, um, mm -hmm. we, we, we are in control of uh, importing and not, uh, perhaps it's not a good, a uh, good You're lockdown, uh-huh. Yeah, and, uh, I'm so not, when are Chinese students starting to come? Either the end of this this month, that means April or the beginning of May. Uh, okay. The graduate students, they will come at first. And then other, gra other grades. So you will see the tendency. That means in a short time, perhaps everything will be okay. Everything will be in order. Okay, so it's to share with you this good news at first. At least I think it is our good news. <laughs> yeah. Now we'll continue with our eighth chapter, software testing. Um. Yeah, okay. A revision. At first, the three conditions which decides which decide the level of required confidence. Yeah, but um <laughs> along with the good news, perhaps you will have a, a not so good news. That means when you get back University, perhaps you need to have the exam. For example, our class will be, <laughs> our class will, will terminate at the end of this month. So if you get back in May, perhaps you will have exam in May. So that revision is important. Now, the first question is the three conditions to decide the level of required confidence. But for um, for those who are not in China now, don't yeah wait for more information to book your flight. 
and I'm, uh, yeah, I haven't got enough information for international students. I have just some information about the Chinese students. Okay, so if you want to book flight, wait for more precise information. Software purpose, yeah. Very good, Saji. User expectations, yeah. Saddam. Good, and another one. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Saji and uh, Saddam. These are three conditions to decide the level of required confidence. Software purpose, use, user expectations, and the marketing environment. We have also talked about three stages of testing. It's a competition over of <laughs> three stages of testing. Yeah. Yeah. Development testing, release testing, and the user testing. Perfect, uh, Roy. <laughs> For development testing, yeah, normally it's the system designers and the programmers who are involved in the testing process. And for release testing, the aim is to check that the system meets the requirements of system stakeholders. For user testing, um, usually we test the system in the environment of users or potential users of our system. So you see the difference between these three stages. And it's, it's a gradual stage. It's a gradual process. At, at first, it's the development testing is like um, uh, debugging to find the discover bugs and the defects. Then we have release testing to check the requirements and the user testing to check it or to test it in the user's environment. Yeah, later we have talked about these, yeah, uh, three stages with each unique or uh, individual section. For the development testing, we have also talked about three levels of granularity. Yeah. Yeah, unit testing, component testing, and another one. System testing, yeah, very good. Thank you, uh, Saddam. Um, can you list the relationship between these three levels of granularity? Describe. Describe, uh, describe the relationships between these three three levels, three levels of uh oh, three levels of granularity. Describe the relationships between these three levels of granularity. <coughs> Mm, 
user expectations and the marketing environment? No. When you talk about this here, Yeah, use user expectations and the marketing environment. There are um, two conditions of deciding the level of required confidence. It's not about the levels of granularity. Okay, to be simple, perhaps it's better to begin by the definition of each level of granularity. What is it? You need testing, for example. What is unit testing? Mm, individual program unit, yeah. Mm. Should focus on testing the functionality of objects or methods. Yeah, both of you have answered correctly. Now we test individual program units or object classes. Also, we need to focus on testing the functionality of objects or methods. Yeah. Um, it's correct. And how about component testing? Component testing. Component one has a class testing and the component testing should focus on testing component interfaces, several unit tests several individual unit one has object individual unit testing yeah mm. yeah uh, exactly yeah what he said by roy is uh, about the relationship between these three levels of granularity and Saddam and, and Saji, uh, both of you have answered the, the question for the definition of component testing and the unit testing. In fact, um, as said by Roy, unit testing it is about individual program unit or object classes. So it is, yeah, it is the test of a class with object or method. It's an individual, it's an individual program units. And for component testing, we test several individual unit, units. That means we test composite component. That's why, as said by Saddam, for component testing, we need to focus on the component interfaces as we have, our, we have composite components here. And for system testing, we test the integrated system composed by all components. So we test the system as a whole and we should focus on component interactions, the interactions between components. 
at the, yeah, said by Roy that we should, uh, it's our fourth system testing. That's the relationship between these three levels of granularity. You see, they are like pyramid. From the bottom to the top, from small units to integrated system. Okay. And then we have talked about the unit testing in detail. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. We have talked about three parts of our automated test. Mm, do you remember three parts of the automated te um, test? Yeah, a setup part where we initialize the system with the test case, like inputs and out expected outputs. Then a core uh, part, we call the object or method to be tested. At last, it is the assertion part. We compare the result of the core with the, the expected result. This is the three parts of an automated test. An automated test is important. Then we have talked about how to choose unit test cases. We have talked about two possible strategies in helping us choose test cases, petition testing and guideline-based testing. And uh, yeah, later we have talked about the component testing. We have uh, listed four types of interface error. Yeah, it's just a, uh, Monday we have talked about these four types of four types of interface error. You see these revisions are also the preparation for our exam, yeah, for the exams, the, for the final exam. Thank you.
No answers? Misuse? No. It's the you uh, what Roy you have mentioned is the three classes of errors. Yes, three classes of interface errors. It's a, a larger classification. And when we talk about the four types of, can I take a lead? I'm not feeling well. Okay, Grandma. Oh, oh, indeed situation perhaps i will note your attendance now in order to, uh, yeah in case i forget to ram knock okay okay take care of you uh, yourself and uh In, uh, yeah, um, so here, for this question, when you heard of three classes, you may think interface, it misuse or other things. And if you, yeah, if we ask for the four types of interface errors, it's different from these ones. Okay, um, if you want, we'll begin by three, three classes of three classes of interface errors. Uh, as Roy said, our uh, interface misuse is one class and two other classes. Um, except the, the interface misuse, two other interface errors. Could you list them? For the interface you misuse, uh, it is common with the parameter interfaces. So you see inter um, parameter interfaces is one type of uh, interface errors. With an interface misuse, parameters may be of the wrong type or be passed in the wrong order or the wrong number of parameters may be passed. That's the interface misuse. And interface misunderstanding is the second class of interface errors.
And the third one. Yeah, timing errors. You see, with the interface misunderstanding, we may, yeah, we may call parameters um, unsuccessfully. And with the timing errors, it occurs in real time system as when we share a memory or a message passing interface, we may have, yeah, the producer and the consumer of data may operate at different speeds. In this way, we will create the timing errors as we don't have the, and the update of data in the right time. These are three classes of interface errors. Interface misuse, interface misunderstanding, and the timing errors. And now four types of interface errors. We have already mentioned some of them. Parameter interfaces, yeah. Um, Good, thank you, Hosna Saddam. Parameter interfaces. Shared, yeah, shared memory interfaces. And to others, procedure interfaces. Also, the next one. Message passing interfaces, perfect. Thank you, Hos uh, Saddam. Uh, you see, uh, we have said that, uh, yeah, here we have introduced these four types of interface errors. Perhaps, uh, in fact, there are much more different interface errors. And these uh, four types of interface errors, they are composition of three classes of interface errors. You see parameter interfaces. We have said that it is an interface misuse. Yeah, it is common for this type of error. And shared memory interfaces are often with the timing errors. Then we have the procedure, interfaces and message passing interfaces. Okay, these are what we have introduced in the previous classes. Now, we'll continue with the benefits of test-driven development. For test-driven development, we have five. Yeah, in total, we have five benefits of test-driven development. The first one is, as what we have said before, we can better understand the problem. Mm. And the second one is the code cover coverage. Every code segment that we write has at least one associated test. So all code written has at least one list. In this way, we can be confident that all of the code in the system has actually been executed. So you see, when we deliver the system, we think that oh everything uh, at least every code segment we have tested so we are more sure 
code is tested as it is written, so defects are discovered early in the development process. And the next benefit is the regression testing. We can develop incrementally a test, a test shoot as the development of the program. We can also, yeah, so uh, we can run regression tests to check that changes to the program have not introduced new bugs. It is the regression testing. And the next benefit is that the simplified debugging. When a test fails, it should be obvi obvious where the problem lies. The newly written code needs to be checked and modified. Yeah, as we have the test quite frequently, when a test fails, we know exactly where the problem lies, and we don't need to use debugging tools to locate the problem. Reports of the use of test-driven development suggest that it is hardly ever necessary to use an automated debugger in test-driven development. And the last benefit of test-driven development is the system documentation. The tests themselves are a form of documentation that describe what the code should be doing. So reading the tests can make it easier to understand the code. Um, in fact, one of the most important benefits of test-driven development is that it reduces the cost of regression testing. And this one, regression testing, is testing the system to check that changes have not broken previously working code. Yeah, that means we'll run test sets that have successfully executed after changes have been made to our system. And this test, it checks that these changes have not introduced new bugs to the system and that the new code interacts as expected with the, the existing code. So regression, Testing is, yeah, um, sometimes it's expensive, especially in a manual testing process. As we have said before, automated testing are very important. It's very important. Mm. It is more simple and straightforward. It's not like the regression testing in our manual testing process, the cost in time and efforts are very high. So, with the, uh, the automated testing, all tests are rerun every time a change is made to the program. And tests must run successfully before the change is committed. That means if we want to definitely add some broke of some segment of code, we need to make sure that these new codes will not bring new bugs. And then after this,
part will 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 continue with the release testing. Okay, the release testing. Perhaps I will talk about it later after the break. Mm. Yeah, you can have a break of 10 minutes and I will note the attendance for you. Okay, Saddam. Hi. May I back? Yeah, there. Now you are so silenced during the break. Okay. Mm. Thank you. So we are all continue. Till now, we have talked about the test driven development. Also, the yeah, um, the development testing in the development testing, we have talked about different, yeah, um, at the, the introduction of. Uh, this chapter we have talked we have said that we have talked about three stages of testing including the development testing release testing and the user testing we have already talked about the development testing in the previous section now we are begin with we will continue with the release testing Release testing is the process of testing a particular release of a system that is intended for use outside of the development team. Here, it means we have a release of system and normally it is developed for the use of customers. That's why we say with this release testing, we will test a particular release of, of system that, that is intended for use outside of the, the development team. It's for the customer or for other users and other end users. Um, in some complex projects, the release could be for other teams that are developing related systems. So it's not it's not usually it's not always just for 
um, for customers coming from other backgrounds. It may also used for other teams, other development, um, yeah, other development team that are developing related system in our complex projects. Uh, yeah, for software products, the release could be for product management who then prepare for prepare it for sale. And we have two, yeah, pr the, primary, the primary goal of the release testing process is to convince the supplier of the system that it is good enough for use. And release testing need to show that the system delivers its specified functionality, performance, and dependability, and that it does not fail during normal use. Yet, um, only in this way, the system can be released as a product or delivered to the customer. And we should take into account all of the system requirements, not just the requirements of the end users of the system. Usually, release testing is a black box testing process where tests are only derived from the system specification. Yeah, we treat the system as a black box. That means the behavior can only be defined, and it can only be determined by studying its inputs and the related outputs. That means we don't pay attention to what is inside the testing exactly. We have another name for it is the functional testing. As testers is only, yeah, um, what we concern with the system is just to test the functionality and not the implementation of the system software. That means we just need to guarantee that the release can satisfy the user's requirements. We don't mind what is implemented exactly, how we have implemented, etc. We just need to be sure of the functionality. Release testing is a form of system testing. Yeah. Mm. It is also, we consider the system as a whole, an integrated system. However, there are two important differences between release testing and the system testing during the development process. A separate team that has not been involved in the system development should be responsible for release testing. And system testing by the development team should focus on discovering bugs in the system. That means the defect testing. And the objective of release testing is to check that the system meets its requirements and is good enough for external use. Validation testing. You see, it's, it's like what we have said before at the, the introduction of this chapter. For the system testing, it's still for bugs, debugging, etc. And for the release testing, we focus on the requirements and the functionality of the system.
for the release testing, we have uh, several subsections like the requirements based testing. It involves examining, examining each requirement and de developing a test or test for it. Mm, yeah, we have a general principle of good requirements engineering practice. It is that requirements should be testable and the requirement should be written so that a test can be designed for that requirement. For us, we can then check that the requirement has been satisfied. And the requirements based testing is a systematic approach to test the case design where we consider each requirement and drive a set of tests for it. Requirements te based testing is the validation rather than defect testing. We are trying to demonstrate that the system has properly implemented its requirements. Yeah, it's the characteristic of uh, release testing. And here we have taken the use case of uh, uh, mental health patient management system. We have uh, two related uh, requirements. With checking for drug allergies. Here, the first one, if a patient is known to be allergic to any particular medication, then prescription of that medication shall result in a warning message being issued to the system user. If a prescriber chooses to ignore a allergy, warning they shall provide a reason why this has been ignored here to check if these requirements have been satisfied we may need to develop several related tests like this the first test is to set up a patient record with no 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 allergies prescribe medication for allergies that are known to exist check that a warning message is not issued by the system then we need to set up a patient record with a known allergy prescribe the medication to that the mission the, to that the patient is allergic allergic to and check that the warning is issued by the system then set up a patient code record in which allergies to two or more drugs are recorded prescribe both of these drugs separately and check that the correct warning for each drug is issued then we need to prescribe two drugs that the patient is allergic and check that two warnings are correctly issued. The last one is to prescribe a drug that issues a warning and overrule the warning. Check that the system requires the user to provide information explaining why the warning it was overruled yeah here um you see with these uh, five chats we can say we can Yeah, we can check if the two requirements before had been satisfied.
for example the first one is for the situation that yeah uh we don't have a an allergic record so nothing will be warned yeah no warning message is issued by the system and the second one we have already a record of allergic so if we have a prescription of this medication then we will receive a warning message and the third third situation is to evaluate the situation of several allergies at the same time the fourth one yeah the fourth one is when we have a prescription with two allergies then we have uh, two warnings yeah. yeah you see the difference between the third one and the fourth one the third one is one allergy in each prescription and two allergies in two prescription and the fourth one is two allergies in the same prescription and the fifth one is when we have the warning in the condition of uh, uh allergic medication the patient uh, and then yeah the doctor has refused the warning so we need to provide information explain explaining why the warning was overruled yeah mm, you see these situations these requirements test Are you with me? Mm. Yeah, it seems like just me who are here. Um. Yeah, so it's better that we have some interactions. Um, yeah, for this one, the requirements. You have, uh, do you have some doubts or questions about these requirements? Yes, you have some questions or oh, no? I'm sorry. Some questions about these, uh, these two requirements. no questions for the moment then it's your time to develop some related tags mm. 
we'll ask somebody to to reply we'll try with the uh, puzzle first of all Do you have some doubts about these two requirements? And first of all, could you could you develop some related tests or for these requirements, please? Okay, first of So please uh, um develop some related tests for these uh, two requirements. Excuse me, Faso. Okay, you want to uh, talk with your microphone or not? Oh, Lofi, I can try. Yeah, um, please go ahead. <laughs> Love you next time. I'll try perfectly. Okay. Uh, so you want to? Do you want to ask others to help you? Uh, like what I need to do? I just need to. Adam. And the question is what like MHC PMS requirements just right? Yeah, uh, here we have two requirements and how can we uh, develop some related tests for these requirements? Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
okay how about this one up uh, maybe i can okay ma'am but i'm typing i type it i send it to you okay okay Want to generate management information that allows health care health service managers to assess performance against the local and government target to provide medical staff with timely information to support the treatment of patients i'm sorry it's not what we are talking about here it's too general what you have answered it's not exactly what we what we need here We want to have some tests, some tests for these requirements. That means some special situations to see if uh, they... like kind of set up a patient record with known known allergies. Like I can okay, wait, ma'am, I type it for you then is this okay or not you can check it okay you have picked it up from the pdf or yes yeah it is one situation um so okay um this situation is to check which which requirement this test is to check which requirement here we have two requirements Um, but so if you want, you can also ask your classmates to help you if you have somebody in mind. is ms up uh, mhc pms requirements yeah yeah i think what i said is it okay 
set up a patient record with no known allergies prescribe medication for allergies that are known to exist check that a warning message is not issued by the system This is a situation, a test situation, and it's to yeah. test which requirement. MIC PMS requirement. Here we have specified okay. two requirements. So which one correspond to this test? Ma'am, this one. The first one, if a patient is one. known, yes. Mm. And um, if, if, yeah, th this one is what you have picked up from the PDF. And for you, um, yourself, which, um, which can, do you want to test with other situations? If other situation, then it's PMS, right? If you yeah. the processor chooses to ignore an allergic warning, they shall provide a reason why this has been ignored Mm. Uh, plus this one like if i just you know, compare with others the like part of release testing may involve testing the emergent properties of a system such as performance and reliability no um what i want here is not not yeah it's free to answer this question as yeah if you are a client and you have provided these two requirements you said to your um, to the developers that i want you to satisfy these two requirements then yeah then for um, for us developers, we are developers. We uh, we need to satisfy these requirements in order to test or to be sure that our system can satisfy these requirements. We need to set some tests. We have to image image uh, image some situations like what you have written here the first one set up a patient record with no known allergies prescribe medication for allergies that are known to exist check that a warning message is not issued by the system this is a situation we uh, we use this test to see if the first requirements can be satisfied or not but we have surely many other situations to be tested. Here is just one situation, you see. And you can in me, yeah, you can support other situations to check this requirement. Is that clear? It's clear.
Okay, here is another. I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, so everyone, if you want, if you have some ideas about other related tests to check if these requirements have been satisfied, don't hesitate. A bakery example. Precisely. Uh, could you explain it in detail, Kaya? Where the client can order the cake online and it then if the cake has peanuts in it, then a warning will be issued. Or you'd say that someone is allergic to peanuts. Is that what you want to say? Okay. Uh, thank you, Kaya. But perhaps you have forgotten what is MHC PMS. Uh, it's our example. <laughs> Do you remember this system is a mental health care patient management system it, it is a system to manage pa the, in, the information of uh, patients and here that's why we have these two okay yeah yeah um if we combine these requirements with your example yeah it can be it, it, this one can be a test. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, exactly. Yeah, thank you, Kaya. <laughs> it's so difficult for you to find some um some test. In this way, it may be a yeah, it may be a next size of the assignment. In fact, you see here, we have two requirements. The first one, yeah, is to check. Oh uh, yeah, we say that if a patient is allergic to some medication, then the prescription of that medication should result in a warning message issued by the system user. And to test these requirements, we have different, yeah, different ideas. For example, the contrast of this is that if a patient 
is a lack a allergic to nothing to uh, to none of the medication then no warning message will be issued it is one way second way is that if a um, patient yeah if we have a if the patient has a allergic yeah has a an allergy of medication of a certain medication then this medication is yeah if this medication is prescribed in two different prescriptions we need to have two warning messages for this yeah for for this patient that means one warning for each prescription as each pre prescription has this allergic medication this is the second situation oh, the, oh yeah we can we may also say it's a three third situation because the second one can be a simple one one medication in one pre prescription then we may also have the fourth situation a patient is allergic to two different medications and these two medications are disappeared on our same prescription then the patient can, or the system user that means the doctor um could re, uh, receive two warnings two warning messages because there are two medications two uh, allergic medications yeah you see even for these requirements we can have four situations and for this one if a prescriber chooses to ignore our an allergy warning they shall provide a reason why this has been ignored so you here for the situation for the yeah we can we may take a test situation as the doctor receive or the pres prescriber prescriber receive our allergy warning it chose, chooses to not ignore the warning then uh the prescription will be cancelled this is one situation and second one is that the prescriber chooses to ignore the warning then the system asks the prescriber to provide a reason why he or she ignores the warning yeah you see here simply we have two situations is it clear so in total i have given at least six situations six related tests of these requirements do you have some questions about this okay thank you saddam no it's not clear mm. okay i mean uh, what we can do is that oh no question okay uh yeah i will send the assignment in the wechat group this is one of the one of the assignments there will be two exercises one is this one and another uh yeah i will send it in the wechat group so please revise these yeah these things carefully yeah um okay we are we may stop here 
Yeah, someone sent the yeah uh, on the PDF. I have already sent it in the group. I think. Uh, I'll say bye to you. Or oh, yeah, today we have two absence, Ken and Kamruzama. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Thank you for your attention. Bye.